Hello, welcome back to my illustration series. Today I'm going to be talking about viewpoints when you design your graphic novel or your comic book. And as you can see here, I have drawn a comic book page with the first four frames put in, beginning of the story. Okay, so the story begins like this. A stranger enters the forest, but unbeknown to him, he's being watched. Suddenly he hears a noise. So, how do you tell that story graphically? How do you make it interesting for the viewer? Well, imagine you're a film director and you're using different angles and viewpoints. So perhaps you would start off with a long shot, a high angle, a low angle, and a close up. So let's do that, okay. Okay, here's a close up of those four frames. Now, uh, before we go any further, remember if you want to know what's coming up next, Ring that little bell icon and subscribe, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now remember the beginning of the story. A stranger enters the forest, but unknown to him, he's being watched. Suddenly he hears a noise. Now you see how I've split that up into the, the four frames. I've just used a panel at the top there, then changed it down here, carried it on there, and brought it up there as a kind of balance, you know? Now, remember I talked about the different viewpoints. Well, the first one, I'm thinking of a long shot, okay? So you see your character in the distance. So imagine your character is, uh, I'm just gonna rough it in like this, coming in. That, I, I would probably have this in silhouette, okay? So uh, the figure is coming in like that. I'll draw it in kind of roughly, okay? He has a, a bow in his hand. A quiver of arrows at the back here, picking up, okay? And you're looking through the trees. So to get that effect, I would have a close-up of a tree here. You're looking past that. And then perhaps silhouettes of other trees, another tree in the background there. And then some leaves coming in. I'll be using um, black to silhouette some of these shapes are some big leaves coming in here and the foreground there perhaps now we're coming down there like that and then some more here and then suggestion of a hill that he is kind of walking down there okay and then more leaves to frame that so you're getting a kind of see that kind of frame for your character so leafage coming in there like that. So there's the first shot, it's a long shot. The next shot, a bit closer, we're looking down in the character as a high angle, okay? So again, we're looking through the trees, and this time perhaps a big curve up here of a tree, but perhaps some vines, trailing vines going over it, that kind of thing. A bit of detail on it, you know? Another one coming in there. Tell us a kind of jungle type forest. Like that with more leaves coming in there. Then you're looking down at your character. So there's his head, looking down at the top of his head. His hair parted in the middle like that. Foreshortened face, and long hair. Coming down like that. And his hand going forward. And again, foreshortened torso. And his uh, other hand coming out here. This hand be holding the bow. Look at that. Okay, uh, probably another tree in the foreground there, so he's going kind of underneath that there. And again, with more of the foliage, like that. And you can see we're looking down in that. I'm going to draw some more, which I will make into silhouettes and another bit coming in here. So there's the second one, a high angle. Now, um, a low angle, he is being watched. Now, what, being watched by whom? Well, you can show, for instance, a hand. It's coming up like that, gripping the leaves, pulling them apart, while whoever is watching him hides behind the shrubbery or with the leaves and so on, you know? And some more leaves coming in here. And then we come up there. And of course he's walking away. He's, just on, he's uh, kind of oblivious of the fact that uh, 
Somebody watch him, you'll see the quiver of arrows on his back. Came in like this. Like that. Okay, and uh, this is how the bow up there. And again, I uh, framed this character by drawing some leaf shapes round about. Okay, and they will be in black probably. So there is the third viewpoint. There was some more leaves in here, okay? Suddenly, he hears a noise. So we're close up now. This is the, the final viewpoint, okay? Close up, so we're right in with the head of the character here. He's kind of looking around, there's a shape. He's obviously worried, so I wonder what's happening. Looking behind him. Like that. Another eye come in there. His mouth kind of turned down slightly. With the lip. And the hair, as I said, was parted in the middle. He's a bit like a warrior, you know? So. Well, he is a warrior, actually. <laughs> All right. So these are the the shapes I would make for it, and also the how to tell the story of the first four frames. You know, long shot, high angle, low angle, and close up. Like that. Okay. And again, I would probably make this more dramatic. Put some lines in here, uh, but I'm going to move on now to inking in this will show you how we can create nice patterns as well dramatic patterns with the black and the white before we actually use color okay so let's do that okay so let's ink in now i'll start off with the uh, lettering and as i think i said if you want to check out how to do the lettering um let's check out my tutorial on basic comic effects lettering and speech bubbles Okay, you can see what I'm doing here, very carefully, following the double lines. And I'll carry on and do that and see when I'm finished, okay. Okay, I'm just finishing this off now, as you can see. Now I can carry on with the rest of the inking in. I'm using kind of a line that goes up and down here to suggest a kind of almost like a parchment type quality to that panel there, see that? Okay, so let's go back to the first frame and we'll link in around the, the tree. And then this is in the background here. With the, uh, the leaf shapes coming in behind there, like that. And then the shape of the character. with the uh, outer head sticking out that, there are the feathered shafts coming up there like that. Okay, I'll just do that in with uh, and sail away because that's what I'm going to do eventually anyway. That's our character, move the dagger hanging down there, something like that, okay and the bow shape coming in, like that. Okay, and the tree, and then our other shapes of leaves coming in like that. Once I've inked all this in, I'll go back over it again and show you which parts that I'm going to use as silhouettes for the effect that I'm looking for, okay? Is up there. Another leaf, like that. Okay, so I'm going to carry on doing that, inking in, and I shall see you when I've finished. Okay, 
Okay, I finished inking in now. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, put in the bits of black. Um, and that will show you the kind of pattern you can get with each of the frames to make it look more dynamic. Okay, so um, he's in silhouette and some of the leaves in the background are going to be in silhouette too, so they kind of frame him. You know, you get a frame around your main character. Uh, let's see. It's uh, in there, there. I'll bring this down here as well. And a uh, little bit in there. Okay, and around this side of them too. Down the side of the frame. Down to here. another couple of bits of these in there because I want to do uh, this bit of the hillside that you're walking on in silhouette too. So that kind of joins up with him, he becomes part of the landscape almost, I think, you see? You how he's nicely framed there. Excellent. So move on to this one now. Again, um, background behind the main, the main shapes here will be and in black silhouette and that over to there and down here as well same kind of thing framing a main character and a sense of drama okay one here and that bit of vine there on the side and down there, maybe a wee bit more dark shading in that bit there, okay? And a bit in here to complete that kind of framing, okay? The next one, you'd be surrounded by silhouetted leaves here. Quickly put them in. Right up to the corner. Always try and think of your story I've been told in the best possible way you can design it. Each frame has got to look you know, thought out. So your story is told in the best possible way. Okay, there we are framing that character again. Now about a little bit of shadow behind this hand that's uh, and a bit of deep shadow there. Okay, you guess a be sense of distance there. Okay, looking through the foliage. And the final one, uh, the black bits I've left uh, just in his hair here. I've done these parallel lines to give a sense of the drama too. You can, you know, you do that kind of thing. And it, looks, it makes it look much more dynamic. Okay. And then the silhouette on this side of his hair. The tendons of hair swinging out. It's quite dramatic. Like that. Okay. Great. Now what I'm going to do now is get a rubber and rub out all of these uh, pencil marks and then we can move on to the colour. Okay, so let's do that. Right, we're ready to colour in now, and I'm using uh, some watercolours. Uh, here's the box of watercolours I've been using. And I've made up uh, roughly about six colours. Now, trying to keep it simple, okay? I've mixed up a, a tone here for the, uh, the skin tone, a uh, colour here for the panels, and three tones of green for the various uh, bits of foliage and so on and one for the bark, the trees. Okay, so let's uh, have a go at that. So start off first of all with the uh, tone for the panels. I've actually used quite a bit of water so if I bring my brush across like that the colour comes through quite, the rather lettering comes through quite easily. Okay. 
like that. A bit more. Another one here now. The variations in colour on these, of course, that doesn't really matter. But the idea is to be uh, pretty dynamic, but also quite simple in your colour range. Don't try and be too wild, you know. <laughs> and that's going to be slightly paler, which is fine, because I'm using uh, less of the colour loader on the brush to get a bit more colour and bring it back again. And you get that slight variation, which is nice. Like that, okay. Now I can move on to these backgrounds here, to a main figure. And uh, I want a light background in here, so that really stands out. So I'll take a kind of light green colour. And uh, put that in. I'll try and go around the figure. I don't want to make any duller. Oops, a bit of a uh, bit of my hand. I'll just wipe it off. Keep a bit of paper hanky handy. Always good to do that. Bring that around there, so that think it really stands out. Okay, if you want to take off colour like there, for instance, just wet your brush and then just uh, pick it off like that. Wipe it and uh, pick off the top colour and the black will come through again. Like that. Right, uh, this one here, the background colour, maybe make it slightly darker, so we'll take that add a bit of darker green to it and go around the figure here put in there and um, let's go back to the brighter colour again for this bit here And uh, maybe even a bit brighter, adding a bit of yellow to it to to get the dramatic quality of this bit here. Maybe a bit of shading by adding, by blending that in with a bit of darker green, like this up here. And then wiping the brush, and then kind of blending those two bits there, like that. Eh? Okay, so that's some of the greens in just now. Let's move on to, and I'll take that down a bit there. Let's move on to the uh, the figure itself now. I've just mixed up one skin tone. So, put the skin tone in there. Okay. Another one for this one here. And one for the, the face. If some of the black bits um, have been painted over, you quite easy to just go back over them again with a with your pen when you've finished. Okay, so that's that in. Now we'll move on to the uh, the greenery now. Some lighter green on these leaves. I'll be putting some darker green on there in a moment, but uh, just for just now, I'll just do this uh, one tone here. Okay, that goes in there. And uh, Maybe lighten up a bit, adding a bit of uh, yellow to it. These bits come in here. We'll paint a bit of contrast there in a second. Like that, okay. Um, 
this hand here and again you use the skin tone for that a little darker like that okay and um, this little detail that is and, and has here here I've got a touch of blue a Prussian blue. So I'm just going to add a bit of blue kind of there to make the, uh, the hair look interesting. Come through the highlights there. Get that kind of bluish tinge there, see? Makes it more interesting. Okay. Uh, now, another bit of green in here, I know they haven't done. And in here. Now let's move on to the uh, bark of the tree, the trunk of the trees. Let's colour here. Now we're in there. And one here. And the trailing vines, let's add on them as well. Maybe we could touch a paler one in there. There's less, there's less paint in the brush, so in fact, I'll maybe touch that in there too. Less paint in the brush, so it's lighter. Okay, and a bit down here. A bit more paint loader in the brush there to make it slightly darker. Uh, okay, I might even use that color on his quiver of arrows. And they leave a wee highlight coming down the middle there, like that. Okay, and uh, perhaps, uh, oh, forgot this bit of his uh, skin tone here. Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay, now his uh, leotard or whatever he's got around his uh, waist here. Um, again, I think I'm going to just. Uh, Use blue for that. The blue that I use for the hair. Touch that in there. And a wee bit I've noticed I've missed here. So put that in here. And then a uh, recombination of colours for this bit in here. Perhaps a slightly darker colour. For that bit of green in there. Right, now the Darker green I told you about in here. I think that's a bit a bit a bit heavier this so I'm going to use a bit of uh, water on that. See that picks it up. And then I'll take my paper hanky and just dab that like that. You see? It picks off the colour you don't want to be there. That's the nice thing about watercolour. Now the darkness, uh, that bit of green that I'm going to put in. Um, mixture of blue and uh, green, make a dark bit of shadow in there, you see. And under here. And also, in the centre of these leaves here, perhaps underneath, bits coming in there. Okay, and maybe even around these uh, trailing vines here as well. Okay, now I've done that very quickly for you, just to get an idea of how you can colour your your comic book as you begin. Uh, maybe a wee bit of colour. Let's see, a bit of green in there, something to pick up that there. Right, um, right, might even uh, Add a bit of blue in that to make it darker. Oops, picked that up. There we go. That's better. Okay, now, um, as I said, you can actually touch in your black again by using a pen, if that's not black enough for you. You see, quite easily goes over there, like that. And you pick out the dark shape again. And it really brings the dynamic 
makes it over back again. And you can go around these leaves and so on. See that picks that out? Same with that. I'll just carry on and um, put in some more of these uh, black shapes, go over the, the ones that have uh, been painted over slightly, just to bring out the sharpness back to the artwork, okay, like that. Um, I'll do it with the lettering as well, that's all you have to do, carefully go back over it again. Of course, what you could do is do it in pencil, first of all, and then go over your lettering once you've painted it. But uh, do it this way too if you want. Right, I'm going to carry on and do that. I'm going to do the lettering and I'm going to use the black pen to pick out all these bits again. So I'll see you when I get to this frame here. Right, we're at the final frame now, and as you can see in these other three, I've sharpened everything up by going over the black again. And uh, I'll just do it for this uh, part of the hair here. You can see uh, the pick set up makes it much more sharp. You know that. Get rid of the little bits that the paint has obscured. Like that. Over there. And of course you can uh, you can do more of those if you want. Those will fade into the background and these will become much more dynamic. Excellent. Great, well I hope you can uh, join me in my next tutorial while I'll be doing some more stuff for you. And some more illustration techniques. Okay, and um, I hope you enjoyed that. But in the meantime, all the best. And happy drawing!